that this is back-to-back -back matches for Northwood on stream, and their boys have been behind them, supporting them. I believe that's SGP behind them in company, and the, and the captain of the squad also behind them. So the Northwood team representing here and hoping their boys can clutch out against Hawk now against, or at least for the side of Michigan State. But right now this is a single Elim bracket. This is winner's side. This is a chance to get into winner's semis and Frostbite Rockin' the Roy, so far getting some good early percent. And this was one of the things that I thought about after I mentioned that point was Rob is a very big body for Roy to continue to chip away at. And while Sorties traditionally struggle with projectiles, Rob does have some good projectiles, but they are kind of committal at times. You can throw out that gyro, but then you don't really have that option again. You throw out that laser, but do you want to use the short laser? Do you want to use the full strength one? You have to go through that decision-making process, and Frostbite often does not give you the time to do so. Keep in mind, though, they're also dealing with a Roy. You know, Rob, one of the best offstage characters in this game. Mm -hmm. They've got great float, they have an amazing down air, they're nair, massive every time. Whereas Roy, one of the worst offstage characters in this game. The moment we go offstage, things are getting going to get explosive very quickly. Very, very quickly. But that first stock is already off the board thanks to Jab back air, and that is a Roy Classic. It's a lot harder to pull off than you'd think, but that back air is very key for Roy to land. A lot of Roy's will end up doing the forward air instead, just misinputting that turnaround, and that is not a kill move. The back air is, and that is why that first kill comes online. Now a chance for Hawk to try and answer back, and they will be able to catch Frostbite's air dodge via of that up air, very key. That's another thing. How does Frostbite land in a battle like this? If the jungle game comes online for Hawk, this could be very, very difficult for Frostbite to deal with. Yeah, the game plan here has to be kind of keep this game grounded if you're a Frostbite. If we're going to the air and you're disadvantaged, it's going to be so, so hard to get through. There, great shield use to lead into a grab. Don't yeah, they don't get the follow-up. They have to reset the neutral once again. They find this short aerial in order to get back to it. Oh, they read the get up. Hawk can't get to their shield in time, and Frostbite takes the lead back. Huge opening there via the forward tilt, taking that stock 65% right now onto Frostbite. We're gonna make something happen here. They'll just wait patiently along that ledge, and again, it's that tenured aggression, right? Being able to flip that switch. They are so aggressive when in advantage state, but then all of a sudden they're on defense and they'll just take that extra second, hold on to that ledge a second longer, wait for you to commit to something, and then punish accordingly, and that has been the strength of North with their punish game. But here, the upbeat hit fall through, but not the strong enough hitbox to really get that hit. And now the back air from Rob will outspace and be able to get this down to a last stock scenario. Still at 120. That's a whole lot of extra credit on the board. Frostbite. Laser comes through, not able to really find anything else. Not enough percentage. Start allowing for those follow ups and conversion. Instead, Amoeba, or as I was hot, put in pretty strong disadvantage. Frostbite trying to find their way back in. Clean landing there. Hawk trying to find just a tad a bit more using the gyro. Switches in with the aerial. Upbeat out of Frostbite. Doesn't connect. Puts him on a platform though. That's perfect chance for Hawk to take full advantage. That puts him exactly in Rob's hit range. So dangerous there. And their run up, turnaround, up tilt will just do it outright out of nowhere, catching Hawk in that moment. Maybe looking for the roll away. And they were able to find it. So game one is going to Frostbite. Hawk now gets that stage counter pick. But Hawk, you saw late in that game, was starting to find their opening, starting to find their windows. And that's the thing that we were talking about, right? The neutral game feels very even, but disadvantage and advantage are very heavily swinging between these. Start the battle. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's the music just kicked on. Is, it, is it is heavy metal time here at Super Smash Bros. And grooving, living up to the heat of the moment. No, no WarioWare gamer from the music set for today. Three, Only two, the biggest and the one. best. Oh, this is the Final Fantasy VII epic <laughs> children music. Yeah, that's appropriate. <laughs> and we're going to Final Destination here for game number two. Like the pick here from Frostbite. Again, nowhere really for, or like the pick here from Hawk, nowhere for Frostbite to run to. Those projectiles become even more dangerous and will certainly land more frequently with the lack of platforms for Frostbite to kind of maneuver around. 
but this all this stage we always talk about it it's double-edged sword your disadvantage and advantage can be very very parallel or can or per uh, pendulum-esque i should say as a oh, great air dodge by frostbite gets around the gyro just barely misspaced the down air otherwise that was surely the stock but now the conversion the other way is gonna be frostbite will steal the opening stock frostbite looking to lean on that opening stock. Now up smash adds in a little bit more damage. Hawks in the air, does manage to get back down again. Good grab, looking for the follow up on the gyro, not gonna have it. Frostbite wanted to recover high. Instead of going low, and there's the down air! We've been waiting for out of Hawks! We love a good spike, and Hawks got plenty of them! He's got another, does he get the third? No! Frostbite just barely able to snap to ledge in time. Dances around the gyro, air dodges this time, does not want to get spiked for a third time in a row. Good parry now coming through, but a good back throw instead. Gyro lingering nowhere for Frostbite to run to again. Ends up running into a forward air, or into a nair, into the gyro as well. Grab comes through as well. Another up air being landed by Frostbite, who's looking to find something here. But look at these percentages starting to trend even until this very moment. Frostbite though, oh, oh, what a read! Oh my oh, mercy! Frostbite, oh my! He must have gotten an A in English, cause my mercy, what a read! what Book Hawk is, but apparently it's a good read because they've been shredding through it. My God, Frostbite, this man has a brain like no other on the Roy. And now, Sydney is very Huge chance there, but now 88% onto Hawk, 133 on Frostbite second stock, and he's looking to try and clean up this second game if he can. Hawk's gonna do something to bring this back, get some momentum back on the board, both dash dancing around each other, knowing that that next quick hit could do it, and that's what Roy thrives at, those quick forward tilts, up tilts have worked, but the laser snipe will do the trick here and get it down to last stock apiece. Those snipes continue to be oh so important time and time again. Off stage, if you manage to climb a projectile, characters like Roy are not coming back in any way, shape, or form. Now, Frostbite fights their way back on the stage, goes to the dancing play, but can't find anything to do it. Manages to get out of time for too terribly much, but Hawk is still able to capitalize. The parry on this laser keeps their shield alive, and the throw can't find the follow-up. Hawk just had a little bit too high of a percentage to really be able to do so. This is not the case for Frostbite. It allows Hawk to completely <laughs> and another down air sends it. Rob Hawk with another wins. down air and the Rob Flex to back it all off there. What a huge down air from Hawk to take that game and what seemed like Frostbite's to lose after that read. He got that stock, it was two to one. It was a full percentage lead, filled nearly 100 on that second stock and somehow, some way, Hawk finds the one opening they need on last stock scenario and gets the down. That just feels like the true momentum breaker when you get a read like that. You know, like, I, I, I don't know how your mental survives a read that solid, charged up smash attack on the roll in order it sends it all of the way through. Still though, insane endurance from Hawk there to be able to reset to themselves get their game plan back under control and re-implement their, their strategy in order to find their path to victory. Yeah, absolutely. When you get spiked like that, or when you get red like that, it is a huge mental deficit, that you know, mental blow that just, it's like a punch to the gut. It, it just, it does not feel good. And to be able to flip that switch very quickly, battle back, especially when your last stock at 100%, to bring it all back, very, very strong there by Hawk to get the job done. And now this series is tied at one apiece. Both of these players have a victory. We're into game number three here on small battlefield for this pick, and I like this pick from Frostbite, again, forcing these up close interactions, but now you've got two platforms to weave around. Yeah, I think this is exactly what Frostbite needs to really keep this moving, kind of kind of back in their favor. Early on though, percentage starting to trend Hawk's way. Good grab, not going for the follow-up actually, more than willing to just let Hawk kind of hang out on that top platform. More than willing to do so. Frostbite right now at 106. Oh, trades with Gyro. That actually helps him get back to stage. 
but it's a very odd spot for him to be in, and he has nowhere really to land. Has an air dodge, fast fall, and up be back to the stage. Will be able to get back and get to grab as well. These grabs for Roy are kind of an odd spot because you can get a decent amount of stage control from it, but there's no real combo game for Roy off of a grab, so Frostbite won't be able to really secure stocks that way. Frostbite now, there's the berry. Can they find the up air? Yes, they can! Hawk really starting to show off those Rob bread and butters. Down air near the edge of stage, Barry into up air. Finally starting to see it. Didn't really get to see a whole lot of it in game one, but now that they've kind of settled into this playstyle that Frostbite's bringing, I think they're really starting to go like, okay, now is when I pull out that kind of set play, that set combo that really brings it through. And a great job to get back on stage with that up air oh, as well. No jump, and he gets hit by Gyro. That's just oh, a that's stock. Right. That's there right. is nowhere for him to go to after that jump is burned, and it's an easy read on that recovery. So Hawk takes down stock number two of Frostbite, and now Frostbite's certainly up against it. Can take this stock relatively easily. In theory, they detect that up that stage, and they will find the back air at the end of that play. So one stock down off of Hawk, but still 2-1 lead. But we just saw Hawk make a play just like this, make this comeback. Now it's Frostbite's turn, and they're already working on it. They nearly got that kill at 60. Just about there. We know the amount of reads that Frostbite can pick up and all those huge hits. Oh, a great little delay in charge by the laser there to really grab Frostbite. <laughs> and another huge read on a charge side smash. He used single hit side beat, and that's something that we really don't see from Frostbite. He's in a very dangerous spot here. He'll hold this thought till after the game, but Frostbite able to battle back now. Gets some nares, chipping away at this stock. Remember, winner of this is on match point. This stock means so much. 81% to 66. Frostbite in stage control. Nair trades, though, and one grab can do it. That side beat will start to kill now. Now that they're at all this rage, Sour Spot won't do the trick quite yet, but look at how aggressive Frostbite is getting. Continually knocking Hawk away off this stage. Back air, strong hitboxes, continuing to land. Good DI from Hawk to be able to survive. Able to poise the patience along this ledge. But now Hawk getting aggressive here. Dangerous on shield. Up smash, jab, back air. Is it enough? Yes, it is. And Frostbite's moving to match point. Another no. comeback win. Every single game has, <laughs> this set has been a comeback win. Unbelievable. Like, it doesn't matter how much insurance you have. We've seen stock leads. We've seen stock in percentage leads. Nothing matters. No like, lead is safe in this series. And I'm curious now what we see here as we move towards match point for the side of Frostbite. And the point I wanted to get to, those side beats, he's mixing oh yeah. them up. He's not just doing the full swings, which would kill at those you know, mid-high percentages, especially towards the outside of the stage. But now he's using them as a mix-up. You saw in that read, he uses single hit. And everyone thinks, OK, he's going to do the full swing or he's going to drag. We've seen Frostbite use it as a drag down at times. So you use it just above, and you still are able to kind of connect them all, bring them across the stage. Yep. But now he's using them as a read, as a mix-up, saying, what's your panic option? And he's able to read these air dodges and rolls it back towards the stage via that forward smash. Right back into it, already opening up with another huge Roy combo. Down throw into the aerial chain that puts Frostbite in a very quick, or as always, puts Hawk in a very quick disadvantage state. Up B on stage. We've seen Roy's all day today, no fear, and just sending those up Bs. And they add on so much percentage so quickly. So much percentage already dealt here. 92 onto Hawk. They might die to this backer. They just will outright Frostbite. Now look at the lead they've built for themselves. 8% on this first stock, but they've got nowhere to run to on this platform. They run it back to small battlefield here, and I actually don't mind the pick again from Hawk, right? Felt like Frostbite had, was at such a severe deficit, but they were able to bring it back, and now Hawk, they just got to find a way to clean things up, but they are the ones at a deficit. But as we just talked about, no lead is safe. No lead is safe indeed. Hawk fishing for that down air once again. Tries to up laser, trying to read out that pressure, that dash in from Frostbite, able to do so. Now, Frostbite really relying a lot more on that neutral game, it seems. Trying to find those small encounters. Their reaction to these projectiles has also been insane with how much they're parrying, how much they're running through. You're not even wow. seeing a lot of shield pressure come through from these projectiles from Bob like you normally do. You're just seeing them all get parried right out. 
lot of parries, but that back air will land. We haven't seen Hawk throw that move out too frequently in this matchup, and reasonably so. But look at this combo. Oh, oh my wow. goodness, Hawk, a quick 38 delta, very stylishly so, but it's not gonna lead to too much as Prospect gets out and still has this lead. 97% here on stock number two. Laser is going to connect as well. Prospect again has to feel so scared and disadvantaged. All they really got is that jump, and once that's gone, oh, you saw it again. They they tried. nearly tried to do it again, but this time around, Hawk was able to mash their defensive option and get out of that tricky situation, that scary spot, as both players are in the red here on Stock 2. Hawk, the one more at danger. Frostbite starting to trend up, though, with that rage. I'd put him at about even percent with the weight of these characters. That Ariel almost doing it, looking for the snipe, not able to find it, takes your fight off stage no now. And Roy not coming back from that, much less without a jump. Oh, side B, that's a lot of damage. Jump used as well, gets caught by the forward air. This could be the stock, the side B will knock them away. Should have to up be early here, but the no back way. air will do it. The and back Hawk air again. is able to take him down a two stock in game four. And once again, we're going the full distance to game five. Name, the game of the day has been back air. Back air, back air, back air. <laughs> Falco's getting back airs. Rob's getting back airs. Everyone's getting back airs. Everyone on Michigan State is getting back Everyone, airs. Yeah. Dice with the back airs on Falco. We've got we've got Hawk here landing these back airs, and we're going to game five. And uh, uh, unbelievable again. You know this. It's so odd because whoever has had the lead in this series has lost. They've lost. That, that, They've always lost, And yeah. you would think, and, and they're picking back to say similar stages, thinking, right. okay, I just need to clean up the game plan. And then they fall behind in the early game, and then somehow they're able to bring it back. It has been so roller coaster between players and these two in particular. This is gonna be a wild game five. Could not be more hyped. Roy versus Rob, R versus R, back to small battlefield. Let's dance. What the music, by the way, to get into this game five. What is Bayonetta, right? That's Bayonetta, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very, very good stuff. But speaking of good stuff, Hawk with these forward airs, able to catch a couple of Frostbite's jumps, and that is the big thing, right? We talked about it time and time again already on that recovery. That jump is so vital to Roy's recovery because that up B, very susceptible. So many ways that Hawk can intercept that up B. So getting rid of that jump is the name of the game, especially with how fast Frostbite is on this Roy. Frostbite now trapped on a platform, gets down with a clean aerial. There's the dancing blade, living up to the name of the song, and finds a kill very, very early here. Only 40 seconds on the clock. But keep in mind, based on the strat, that puts Hawk in the losing position. <laughs> so if it follows, then you know. We'll see. But that, that is a dangerous up air. We've seen these jungles come online. Well-timed air dodge by Frostbite. Needed that to get back down to stage. Down throw instead. And again, the text on the platform mean that Hawk can get up for the moment, but Frostbite is just so clean with these chase downs. Up air is connecting time and time again. Already working at such a massive lead here. 79 to 115. And Roy with all this rage. This is kill percent now. If they find something clean here along the ledge, this jab. Oh, they go for the up smash this time. I like the mix up. But the up, up B will do it outright. And now it's a 3 1 lead and Hawk has so much to do to climb this mountain. Biggest lead we've seen thus far. Hawk needs to get moving and moving quickly, but it looks like Frostlight is fully online. The blizzard is coming, and there's not a whole lot of ways to stop it. Barry comes through, though, not dying. The DI just a little bit too good. The spacing, not perfect. Frostlight's able to keep it going, and now Hawk's a disadvantage off stage. This is exactly where Frostlight wants it to be. A good read for Face about. Get up attack, though. They want to help Hawk get back on stage, and then there, also just barely not killing. Laser comes through, can't find the way, it's not charged up. You see Hawk there trying to get the gyro, oh, they no. fall out of up air. That should have killed. No way. Hawk now at 106, all the way upstage. You don't want to be that high, that's so easy to grab. Just Hawk barely getting back. The up air off stage. Frostbite gets a little bit too aggressive, and they pay with it. Stop. Hawk has to be so careful here, though. 120 and so many quick kill options on Roy. Side B, forward tilt, jab, back air. There's so many ways that Frostbite can kill him. Hawk has to play near perfect on this next stock, but they're going to run out of time to do so. Run up forward tilt will do the trick, and Frostbite is moving on to the winner's semi. All the way to top eight.